So .NET Mali is the new exciting framework in the .NET ecosystem, but I still see a lot of people showing love to WPF. So if you are still a big fan of WPF and you haven't seen it already, there was some pretty exciting news released last week from the official WPF team. So the team announced that they're going to make WPF cross-platform. We're talking Windows, uh, Linux, Mac OS, and it's all coming in Q2 2024. Just kidding, that's not true. Now I feel bad, that is not what the news was. That would have been a good clickbait title, one that have been. But let's get into the actual news. So now I kind of feel bad because obviously this is much smaller than something like cross-platform uh, WPF support would be. But this is still pretty important news and we'll get into why I think it's important. So there was news coming in .NET 8, going to be support for the open folder dialog mechanism on Windows. So this allows us to use the Windows API that allows us to select folders. This surprisingly wasn't a thing. Before you had to use the open file dialog and explicitly select a file. You couldn't select a folder, which was kind of frustrating. So this is actually useful. I could see myself using this. So they get into it here. So this is brand new. Uh, they did some refactoring as well. So as we can see, they like added this base class. So the file dialog and the open folder dialog both inherit from the same base class. So they still care about the code. They're making it as nice as they can. We see some usage down here as well. So Pretty straightforward, seems similar to how the open file dialog is used, makes sense since they're inheriting from this common base class now. Then we can see what the folder dialog looks like. Sweet, looks good. And that wasn't it, so that was the big feature was the open folder dialog, but there were some other things added to the file dialog. So we got some new properties as well. I won't go into depth about what these properties are, but some of these look useful. I could see myself actually using them. And then what's next for file dialog? So they call out as always, there's room for improvement. Makes sense. And they even have a open pull request with some other features. So that's exciting. There's more development going on. And then the person who built or added support for this open file dialogue in WPF, we have, I think it's Jan Kusera. So he's a community contributor. I don't think he actually works for Microsoft. So that's exciting that the WPF team is actually taking contributions from outside of Microsoft. So Microsoft or WPF is really embracing the open source culture and allowing the community to contribute, which I think is pretty huge. So the good thing about the .NET blog, we get some comments down here. So I did browse through these a little bit. This one was my favorite. So this guy says, too late and too small for an improvement. You cannot write a decent WPF application without spending a couple of grand in third party controls. And Maui's a big no, too sad also. I don't know how I feel about that. In the past, I have worked on some pretty big WPF apps that didn't pull any third party controls and thing uh, actually, I remember the biggest app I ever worked on did pull in this like third party tree view and it was like so buggy that it probably would have been better if we had just written it ourselves. But still WPF is powerful and I still feel like on your own, you can, you can implement some pretty advanced controls. I guess it really depends. Some controls you probably don't want to implement yourself. And then of course, Maui, still growing, we'll say that. But aside from that, aside from the negativity, we'll say, we get a comment from someone on the WPF team. We are just getting started. Stay tuned for many new features to come. So that's pretty exciting that there is active development on WPF and there's actually a team looking into this and supporting the framework. And then of course there are more comments on the .NET blog, but a lot of these say similar comments to this. Oh, I needed this five years ago, blah, blah, blah. So let's move over to Reddit where there's some more interesting comments. Here we go, WPF, the reports of my death are greatly exaggerated, yes. And other people are calling out the downvotes and the negative feedback that we've seen. But yeah, as this person says, WPF is still Microsoft's most popular desktop UI framework. And at this point, I feel like it's the most stable and most powerful. But this comment down here was the one that was exciting. So this person calls out that they moved WPF to their offshore team and now they suddenly have developers focused on it. And as a result, there is new features as we're seeing and even some bug fixes. And we'll get back to this reply in a little bit and dig deeper into this. So keep going. The comments in the blog post are way too salty. Yes, I agree. I mean, I can understand some dissatisfaction over WPF not really getting as much support as it might have deserved, but this much saltiness over technically a new feature is kind of surprising. I've been waiting 16 years for this feature. I thought WPF died with .NET Framework. I suppose I'm out of the loop. More like Orbit. Yep, WPF still around. 
still getting ported to new versions of .NET. So really the biggest takeaway I've gotten from this is that there is still a team dedicated to WPF and is actively supporting it and even adding new features. So I was even more curious and I wanted to go over to GitHub and see what kind of development is going on. So here we go over in GitHub and I'll link all of this in the description of the video if you want to explore yourself. There's some interesting stuff going on here. So community goals, it's not really much exciting stuff here. So test migration, PR test automation. So on the surface, this doesn't sound too interesting, but looking at why they want to make these enhancements, as they call it here, ensuring that community contributors add new features and fixes without breaking any existing functionality. And same kind of theme with PR test automation, kind of focused on making it easier for the community to contribute to WPF. So I think that's exciting that they're going to open this up for more community contributions, as they call out here as well, community projects. I just got to say, it is cool to see WPF embracing open source. And then there's some other interesting stuff in here as well. So this was cool, a proposal for WPF adaptation for Maui. So this would be something that allows Maui to use WPF as its underlying framework. Not entirely sure what that means, but given Maui's instabilities, putting it on a more stable framework like WPF, maybe there's some opportunities there. That could be cool. But ultimately what I'm getting at here is that WPF is not dead. It looks like there's a team dedicated to it now. It seems like they're going to open it up for more community contributions. And although there's not a clear roadmap for feature development or anything major coming, it seems like there's still more things to be figured out before community contributions are more supported. And it seems like this new offshore team is still sorting things out before ramping up development. But nonetheless, it is something to keep an eye on. Maybe not this year. It is already, what, September? So kind of winding down on 2023. We'll see what happens in 2024, but overall, I would love to see WPF receive more improvements and support so that when .NET MAUI fails, we have something to go back on.